Ever wondered how complex circuits chips are tested for faults before they hit the market? Welcome to DFT Decoded, where we demystify the fascinating world of design for test. Hello folks, this is Ankit and I'm passionate about bridging the gap between technology and understanding. With a background in DFT, I created this channel to help engineers, students and tech enthusiasts navigate the intricate world of DFT. I'll try to explain DFT, which is a crucial part of chip design in a most simplified way. I'll cover all theoretical and technical concepts as well as we'll discuss a lot of problems and issues we faced in DFT as an engineer and try to explain the solution in a most simplified way. Let's start with question, what is an electronic chip? A chip is a compact electronic circuit that performs a specific function or multiple functions in electronic devices. It's a brain of all electronic devices. It gives instructions and controls it. Today, what we call smart devices are smart due to this chip installed in it. It is composed of billions of transistors etched onto a wafer of silicon. In terms of functionality, there are four main categories. Logic chips, memory chips, application specific integrated chips, ASICs, and system on chips, SOCs. Now we'll discuss the very question, what will happen if no DFT exist? Suppose we made 100 chips, 90 of them are fault free but 10 of them had to have some manufacturing defects. Now this manufacturing defects can hamper the actual functionality of a chip. Assume all 100 chips are made for controlling an automation purpose of any device and they are installed in an aircraft. Now the aircraft which has faulty chips can lead to malfunction of its navigation and controlling system which can result in serious accidents. In turn, results in loss of life of so many people. All the money and time that has been spent in making these chips will go in vain. All the time and money that has been, stemp that has been spent in making the uh, costly aircrafts also go in vain due to some faulty chips. It can lead to downfall of company shares and customers will also hesitate to install these chips in their devices. Oh, quite a big damage, isn't it? What is the solution for this? Engineers thought long on this and hit an idea. What if we modify the chip design so that it can self-test, self-repair or can be tested after a chip is manufactured before sending it to consumers. Here enters our topic of discussion DFT. What is DFT? Design for test is a method which ensures that a chip can be easily tested after the manufacturing. With the help of DFT, we can tell whether a chip is a fault free or having some defects. As the name is telling, we are designing something so that it can be tested. That's why the name Design for Test. Most people confuse that DFT is a testing domain, but it's a design domain and not testing. We are designing something on a chip without affecting its functionality so that its faults can be tested. Keep in mind, I'm repeating, DFT don't affect the actual functionality of a chip. Another major confusion for beginners is they think DFT enables us to test the functionality of a chip. But DFT only helps to test and detect the manufacturing defects. DFT don't care if your chip is not functioning properly as the way it is supposed to. Suppose a chip is manufactured to perform arithmetic calculations and it is installed in a calculator. Now if you are operating 3 plus 3 and getting output as 9 and blaming that I have enabled DFT in my chip then also it's not working properly. 
so it's not a dfty job maybe your chip has designed in this way to function dfty will only let you know that there is no manufacturing defect or fault in your chip that's it once a chip is tested and found defect free dfty logic acts as a redundant logic on chip objectives of dfd it improves fault detection it helps in reducing debugging time how it does we'll discuss in upcoming videos importance of dfd quality assurance yeah it ensures your quality of a chip is best time efficiency dfd helps in debugging any issue on a chip very quickly cost reduction as we have discussed in previous slide where we have given example of an aircraft that shows how a small defect on a chip can cost lots of millions of dollars through dft we can easily solve this issue customer satisfaction with good quality chips having no manufacturing defects strengthen the trust of customers Here are some major topics in DFT. Embedded. It is related to part of DFT where you embedded a design on a chip so that memories test themselves and repair if any part of it is not working properly. Scan insertion. This is a process of converting all your flops into a scannable flops so that it can be used to detect faults on your chip. ATPG. Automatic test pattern generation is a method which generates set of patterns that controls scan flops and helps in testing all sorts of defect in our design. This is perhaps the most important part of TFT. Fault simulation. This is a process of simulating test patterns that has been generated through ATPG. IJ tag. It is used to access instruments that are embedded on a chip to perform test and helps in debug elbest it is similar to embest but here chip do self test on important part of logic instead of memories i'll explain each and every concept of these topics in detail in upcoming videos applications of dft since dft logic is a part of chip only we can say whatever is the application of a chip is the application of dft Nowadays almost all the electronic devices has chips inside it that's what make it smart from self driving car smartphones computers aircrafts smart home appliances has a chip installed on it you you all have heard about internet of things there are new devices coming that we can connect them through internet this is also possible because of these magical chips chips are the backbone of this modern world what is the future of dft i hope you all have heard of moore's law during your engineering it is stated that the number of transistor on a chip doubles every 2 years this statement is so true today we can store terabytes of a data on a small memory card but in older days storing few mbs requires a space of a small room you see chip sizes are reducing so fast that it requires very complex and advanced technology to fabricate them this increases the probability of manufacturing defects in turn dft acts as a safeguard in making these complex chips fault free The semiconductor industry in India has shown a remarkable growth soaring to 34.3 billion dollar in 2023 and projected to reach 100.2 billion dollar by 2032 with a compound with a compound annual growth rate of 20.1% the semiconductor industry is on the brink of a transformative journey driven by relentless innovation strategic investments As India positions itself as a global semiconductor manufacturing and design hub, the need for skilled 
talented in a system on chip design embedded systems and semiconductor fabrication is critical the rapid expansion of semiconductor industry has led to an increased demand for professionals with expertise in semiconductor technology this growing demand creates numerous opportunities for those pursuing a vlsi career and highlights the importance of a specialized semiconductor courses to equip professionals with necessary skills here are the list of few companies here are the list of few companies that are leading in semiconductor market we have qualcom amd nvidia intel texas instrumentation these are product based companies and we have other companies also which give services in semiconductor industries some of them are tesol semiconductors in semi technologies info chips open 5 With increase in demand of shipping and data industry all IT giants are acquiring small VLSI startups prerequisites for this course first is you need some basic knowledge on digital logic and design subject you can learn it from a book by Morris Meno second is you should have some understanding of any one programming language not advanced level but basics that's all you need Most of the time I'll try to explain all the concept here in my videos itself so that you don't have to go anywhere else. So that's the end of video introduction to DFT. I hope you find this helpful. Please give your feedback and valuable suggestions. Thank you.